Hello and welcome to InfoWise Ultimate Forms Kickstart Training. This training is meant to introduce uh, new users to fundamentals about using Ultimate Forms tools. Uh, this is also beneficial uh, for people who have had the tools and want to broaden their skill set and familiarize themselves uh, with more of what Ultimate Forms has to offer. In this training, we're going to be building a full help desk tool. Um, and we're using this as a way to demonstrate uh, all of the different things that you can do with Ultimate Forms. The format is going to be presentation based. Uh, we'll have some quizzes um, in there. Um, and then um, we'll go through and um, kind of review all the various features. Uh, my name is Will Cooper. I am the <coughs> InfoWise Ultimate Forms training coordinator. And um, I work on all things related to training with InfoWise. Outside of that, I am a SharePoint consultant. And I've used the Ultimate Forms for several years. And um, before that, I had a uh, background in web development with Microsoft. So that's a little bit about uh, my background as it relates to SharePoint and Ultimate Forms. So in this first section, we're going to be starting by uh, starting from scratch. We're going to do our site preparation. We're going to make some lists and set up our fields. All this will be regular SharePoint activities, and then we'll begin to get into the ultimate form settings. Um, at that point, we'll be doing associated items, um, and then uh, configuration of InfoWise fields, um, and that type of thing. We'll be setting our fields into tabs, and uh, at that point, we can test out our form with the test record and do uh, auto-generate ID, permissions configuration, and then we'll have a quiz. <clears throat> so first thing we got to do is uh, go ahead and get our site set up. So what we want to do um, in this session, we're going to do this using modern pages and modern list views. Um, so if you are uh, familiar with using classic pages or that's what you're used to, just something to know. This training is uh, dem demonstrating using modern sites. Okay, once you've created your site, uh, we want to get rid of uh, what's kind of by default um, on the home page and we want to have a banner at top. I just went and found one for uh, help desk, so that's what I threw on the top of my home page. And then uh, we're going to go into our site contents. And what we want to do is do a new app. And uh, before we can take advantage of Ultimate Forms, we need to go ahead and add that app on there. Um, so um, if you're new to Ultimate Forms, if you haven't done this already, on the Ultimate, the InfoWise uh, website, um, you want to install the um, the trial version if you don't have the paid product yet. Um, you want to have your SharePoint admin do this, but we have a video which describes that installation. Once that's done, it makes this app available on your site content screen. So if you don't see this app available, then you need to go back and um, get the uh, Ultimate Forms installation done and find instructions on the InfoWise site um, in, the, uh, in the main page. Okay, when you click on that button, it'll ask to trust it. So of course you just click on that button and then uh, it usually will take a few minutes for the app to load. And you do need to repeat this step for each site um, for SharePoint Online. The examples we're looking at today are for SharePoint Online, um, but all of this is applicable uh, if you're using on-premise SharePoint as well. But for uh, SharePoint Online, you do need to add this app individually for each new SharePoint site. All right, there's our app. Uh, so we're ready to go on to the next step. Um, so we need two lists for our solution that we're gonna build. We need a tickets list, um, which is gonna be for help desk tickets. And then uh, we're gonna have a tickets tasks list, which is a, a sub list uh, to use for um, adding tasks to those help desk tickets. Um, so you always have to begin with this. This is always the first step. 
Um, anything that you're doing with SharePoint, if you're going to build out a solution, you need SharePoint lists to hold that data. So we've got to create those lists and we've got to create fields in those lists. Okay, this diagram shows a basic help desk process. So this is what we're going to model out uh, with our solution. Um, so the idea is the user would submit a uh, ticket. Uh, we want to be able to assign that and we want some emails to go out. It uh, becomes in progress and then at that point um, it would go into um, hopefully get complete or, or put on hold or canceled or something like that. All right, so we're going to go back to site contents and you want to add a list. And uh, we're going to start by making our tickets list. And then also go ahead and create the list for tickets tasks. Okay, so we just have two plain vanilla SharePoint custom lists, which we've created in our brand new site. Um, and also it's useful as you're adding lists and pages and things like that to update your site navigation, which is the left navigation to include links. So it's easy to uh, locate these lists and pages that you're creating. All right, so now we need to make some fields. We're going to start with our tickets list and we need to go to the, um, the settings for that. There's a couple of different ways to get there. From the site contents, you can go into the ellipsis menu and pick settings to get there. Okay, so um, in the settings screen, uh, the first thing we're going to do is go into the existing title field and we're going to go ahead and rename that to something more meaningful. We want to rename that to ticket. Okay, and then you can put in a description just like that. Okay, and then we're going to be creating lots of different fields. So for those of you guys who are SharePoint veterans, this should be a familiar process to you. You'll click on that create column. Um, and then we'll make fields and repeat this process. So we need a text field called ticket ID, uh, then a description field, which will be multi-line text. Um, we need plenty of room for that, so we'll set that to 15 lines, and you can use the enhanced rich text option. Notice we do not want that to show in the default view because this is going to be a long description and we don't want to stretch out the pitch. Uh, we need a field to hold a current date. Um, by default, we'll set that to today's date. You'll see how this is going to be used a little bit later. We need a due date. This is um, a due date for when that help ticket should be completed, uh, not required. We need a status field. Uh, so this is a choice field. You can see the options there on your screen. So we need uh, options for not assigned, assigned, in progress, hold, canceled and complete. And by default, these tickets are gonna start out not assigned. So that's going to be the initial value. Okay, <clears throat> next one's till due. Uh, now this one's a little more fancy. This is gonna be a calculated field. So um, this is basically um, some check logic where um, we wanted to do some math and uh, tell how many days uh, until due, but we have some exceptions, right? If the ticket is complete or canceled, then uh, we don't want to uh, show any value there. So that's what that statement's about. So you can just kind of type in just like I did it. Don't worry if this doesn't immediately make sense. It'll make a little bit more sense once we get further along in the process. Okay, there's the formula for you to make it a little bit easier to read. Okay, we need a field for the requester. This is the person submitting the help ticket. So this is uh, what you would call a uh, SharePoint people picker field, the person or group option um, that is required. Um, and then we need the uh, help agent. That's the person who's gonna be working on the uh, ticket. That's another people picker field. Uh, we want to have a box which should be used to send a message during the um, process when the ticket's open. So this will be another multi-line text. Um, you see there in the description, we have some help task, text. This is used to guide the uh, user when they're creating the ticket. This one, we'll just do plain text for that. Um, and then 
our next one is going to be um, manager notes. Um, so this would be a screen only used for the help desk manager. So that's another multi-line text. Um, this will also be plain text. Okay, we need a, another choice field. This will be progress percentage. The purpose of this field will be a way for the um, help desk agent to indicate how far they are along working on that ticket. So especially if it was something that was many steps or there are multiple tasks involved, it's a way for them to demonstrate progress. So this is a percentage that they're indicating. And so we have options for zero, 20, 40, et cetera, all the way up to 100 if it's complete. Uh, we have a secondary field that ties to this. So the choice field outputs a text value. Um, so what we want to do is convert that to a numeric value, and we're going to use that in an indicator that you'll see. Um, so if you're wondering why we kind of have the same field going on twice, that's why. Um, but um, this will be a calculated field, and you just need to pass the value from uh, progress percentage to this, and uh, that, that way we get a, uh, a number, which we'll need later. Priority, this is you know, a way to uh, help uh, to sort, differentiate, and know which tickets have got to get worked on first. So you know, priority one would be the highest. So uh, this will be another choice. So uh, it's one, two, three. Uh, by default, it'd be three, which is a, a lower priority. Um, we're going to categorize these. Um, as you know, there could be all kinds of help desk tickets. Um, so these are just arbitrary categories that I came up with. You, you know, you can put anything that you want here. Um, these are just um, some examples of things that we might have. So uh, you can put in choices like that or even come up with your own. Um, by default, this is going to be um, unassigned for category. Um, so this would be set once the ticket gets created. All right, so it's a lot of work initially to set up your list and fields, but it is necessary. You have to create the list and fields to hold your data, and this is just fundamental SharePoint activity. So um, you always need to begin there. And it gets a lot more fun and interesting as we get into uh, some of the other settings as we move further along. All right, so um, tickets is our main list. Our next list is tickets tasks, okay? So just like we did before, we're gonna go into the settings. And in this case, we're gonna take some extra steps. We're going to have what's called an associated items field. And this lets us have a many to one relationship between uh, the sub list and the main list. That means that I can have multiple tasks for a individual ticket. In order to set that up, I have to do kind of some advanced SharePoint settings. What I want to be able to do is change the content type to use the uh, InfoWise Ultimate Forms uh, Associated Items content type. Um, so don't worry if these settings seem uh, complicated or unusual. This is not a task that you'd have to do very often, but it is necessary for this type of list. So. In your advanced settings, allow management of content types. Once you've done that, you will want to click on item under content types. So we're going to get rid of the default content type. So go ahead and delete it. It'll give you kind of a scary warning message and just say, yes, that is really what I want to do. Once you've done that, you can add our own content type, which is going to be InfoWise Associated Item. Okay, so go ahead and add that. And then once you've done that, we can go back to the same kind of activity we did before. Um, just as before, we're gonna go to the title field and we're gonna rename it. And in this case, instead of title, we're gonna use um, task, okay? So uh, just change the name of it and save. And then we're gonna add some more fields. Uh, we want to have uh, details for our task, so that'll be a multi-line text field. Um, and this one can be enhanced rich text and that is required. Um, for, just like we kind of have for our ticket, we want our, our each task to have its own status. Um, less complicated in this case. We just want to have not started, in progress, and complete. 
and by default this is uh, not started. Okay, so um, next thing we're going to do, we're actually going to get into the InfoY settings, um, which is uh, gets a little bit more interesting. Um, so what we need to do is go to our regular list view for tickets. And when you do that, you'll notice in the ribbon toolbar, you're going to see a puzzle pieces icon that says design next to it. And that's really important um, because this is the jump off spot to get to the ultimate forms settings hub. And we need to go to that screen uh, quite a bit. That's where we do all our settings and configuration related to ultimate forms. Okay. Um, when you're in the screen, um, on that main screen, uh, always be sure to pay attention to what's shown in current list because any settings and configuration that you do is always tied to a particular list. So if I want to change settings related to the tickets list, um, I will do that from the tickets list. Um, if I'm doing tickets tasks, then of course I need to change that, um, but just something to pay close attention to. Okay, so the InfoWise column types are in the columns section, and you can think of these as options which enhance and um, expand upon what's offered by SharePoint out of the box. One of the um, most useful and e easiest to learn is the uh, color choice, and what this lets us do is take a uh, regular SharePoint choice field and add icons for that. Uh, you have a couple of different options. You can just have shaded colors or you can do icons. Uh, I personally like to use icons. Um, I use that probably 99% of the time. So if you check the box that says show as icon, um, you can click in there and you will see 250 different choices that you can pick. So it just helps to dress up the interface and make things uh, more eye-catching and visually appealing. Okay, so um, in the next one, so we'll go ahead, that's one of them that was uh, for um, category. So next one we have is priority. So basically we're just adding these icons uh, to update these choice fields to make them look nice on our dashboard. Okay, and then for status, um, again, we're just doing the same type of process. You can pick whatever icon you want for these. And in fact, I encourage you to do that. So don't feel like you need to match exactly what I did. Okay, the next thing we need after those color choice fields is an associated items field to um, link to tickets tasks. Okay, so you, if you go in there and add a new column, we're just going to add a field in the parent list called tasks, and this will be a container to hold a list of those tasks. When you go in there, it's automatically going to recognize, since we changed the content type, it'll find that tickets tasks list. So you uh, just use those settings and uh, you can create the field. So pretty basic. Uh, next thing we want to do is create some InfoWise indicators. Uh, so we have the um, indicator option. There are three types of indicators. You have a progress bar, uh, KPI, and countdown. Okay, we're going to do a progress bar. If you remember that progress percent, what we're going to do is create a bar that fills up uh, according to that value. So this is a 0 to 100 value, and what we're doing is picking the column that holds that number, and that column is prog. Uh, percent, and you'll see on your dashboard this will fill up according to whatever that value is. Okay, and then for um, on time, this will be the KPI indicator, and this is tying to that calculated field. If you remember that uh, formula that you had put in earlier uh, for till due, what we're doing here is we want this to be. Um, red if it goes under, you know, less than a day till due. Uh, it can be yellow if it's from one to three days. If there's more than three days before it's due, then that's a, a green flag. So that's kind of how that works. You have these threshold values that you set. 
Okay, so for the initial form setup, what we're going to do is just uh, kind of drag out our fields and do this. So this is this is what we're trying to get our form to look like. Okay, in order to do that, uh, remember that puzzle pieces button you click on. So you're going to go to the ultimate form settings hub and under modern forms, you're going to click on form designer. Okay, so when you very first do this, it's always going to ask you this question. And you can either uh, generate a default form or start with blank. Um, I usually will hit cancel because I like to start from blank um, because I kind of have to, like to have control over things and it's a little bit easier to understand the whole process as opposed to letting the system sort of uh, pre-generate some components for you. Okay. After you've created all the fields, this is the next step that you want to do. So the sequence of steps and the overall build of your solution is important. So um, if you remember, what we, everything we've done this far, we created our list, then we created our fields, and then we did our InfoWise fields. So Form Designer always should come next. So what we're going to want first is we're going to add uh, tabs to the top here, and that's going to be a way to... Um, Kind of split up our fields and have a tabbed interface so we don't have everything scrolling down a long page okay so we're going to add those three tabs help request ticket updates and manager okay so the way that you do that is you um, click on the tab control on the lower left and you're going to drag it out onto the canvas and then once you do that you can click on those tabs and then um, assign field so in our first tab we're going to have uh, these fields, ticket, description, request or send message and attachments. Um, and you simply need to left click on the uh, columns on the left side of your interface in Form Designer and you can just drag them out onto the canvas. And they will reorder um, as you uh, drag that around. So you can kind of uh, place things where you want or adjust those at any time. Okay, and then in the second tab for ticket updates, this will be help agent, category, priority, due, status, progress, percentage of tasks. And this is kind of the work area for our help desk team. Manager just has one thing. It's just the manager notes field. And you're going to see a little bit later how we're going to be able to set that so it's only used by the manager. Okay. Publishing is really important. Um, you can click that button at any time and it'll save any updates that you've made. I encourage you to use that frequently, you know, just in case you make a mistake or accidentally click out of the screen, but that will um, save all your progress for you. So use that quite a bit. Okay. So same thing for tickets, tasks. Um, I want to just set up the basic form for that. So at this point, the only configuration we're doing is just getting the basic form going. So once again, I'm going to hit cancel when I go in there. And our task just has the uh, task, description, and status. Um, so a real easy one there. Um, I do like to use the tab control on, on just about all my forms. So even though this really just has one form section, um, I did do that in this case. Now that you've got your basic forms laid out, um, it really is helpful to just do a check and make sure that that form looks the way that you expect. So you should return to that tickets um, dashboard view um, and, and go ahead and create a ticket at this time. Okay, so what you always want to do is test um, by entering the form and doing edits or new records after each round of configuration changes. Um, so the point is you don't want to try to do, you know, 20 or 30 things at a time in form designer before testing it out. You should do small bite-sized changes and come out to your form um, in uh, SharePoint and try it out and see if things are updated as you expect. Okay. So, um, Go ahead and create dummy tickets, you know, just to try things out and see how it's working. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just putting in some silly help desk tickets uh, as a way to test out the system. Okay, so 
we can create our records, but there's all kinds of features and functionality that we want to build into our system. You know, this, right now, all it does is merely capture information. We haven't done any kind of extra configuration or functionality yet. Okay, so what we want to do now is we're going to create uh, an auto-generated um, ID for our record. Uh, so we want something that kind of looks like. We don't want just that uh, boring SharePoint ID. So if you go into um, the settings for this area, what you can do is set up a pattern uh, which will be used and it'll auto increment. So this is our help desk tool. So um, in my example, I have HTT for help desk tool dot. And then that funny pattern that you see there, um, the hashtag is the um, numerator function, which will auto increment. And the uh, pipe and 1,000 is, that's a way to tell it to see the value of 1,000. So you'll see that the ticket IDs will start at 1,000. So the system handles this entirely. Notice in the next to the number three says uh, to prevent manual editing. So it's uh, read only and it's handled by our system automatically. Okay, we need to do some configuration. So uh, you will be going back to Form Designer many times to make those incremental adjustments to get what we want. So uh, with Form Designer, you do your field permissions uh, right there. Um, so just to talk broadly about permissions in SharePoint and, and, and using Ultimate Forms, um, generally speaking, there's really, th these are the key concepts that you want to know. You have write, read, or deny permission. So um, those are the three accessibility levels uh, for a field. And then we have three different forms that we're dealing with. This is a basic SharePoint concept. You have the new form, which is the form that appears when you very first create a record. You have the edit form, which is any time that the, an existing record is modified. And then you have view um, if you uh, are just accessing a record and uh, not, not doing that in edit mode. Those are the three different um, states that a form can be in. When you do permissions, normally you do it in pairs. Um, you'll have one permission which is granting access to a particular user group or user based on a particular role, and then you usually have a uh, secondary permission describing the restriction, uh, describing uh, the situation in which the um, the field uh, should not be accessed. So you'll, you'll see that when we uh, create those permission rules. You always want to check your permissions uh, to confirm the results. Um, it can be easy to get tripped up or potentially miss a setting. So um, as we'd stated earlier, make sure that you're going back into that form and trying things out uh, to confirm that the form does what you think it is going to do. Okay, so we need SharePoint security groups for the system. So um, this is a practice tool that we're building, um, but in your site, go ahead and create these uh, SharePoint security groups. We're gonna have one for Help Desk Support. Uh, this is the Help Desk Support team. And this will include all the members of the team, including the Help Desk Manager. And then go ahead and make a security group for Help Desk Manager. And of course, that will just be the Help Desk Manager. And uh, of course, make sure that you are in the Help Desk Manager group as well as Help Desk Support. Okay, so what we want to do is go into the uh, Form Designer interface and each of the controls that you put on your form, um, they are uh, containers, if you will. And when you click onto them, it sets them in focus and then a context menu will open on the right hand side. And these are all the various settings that can be applied to that specific control. And what we're working on right now is permissions. And so to create a new permissions rule, what you want to do is click on the uh, link where it says add rule and it'll open up a panel and then you can apply your rules. Okay, so um, in the top, it's important, go ahead and give a good description to your rules when you do it. And it makes it a lot easier as you're building your system uh, so that you can see the rules you've created without having to open up this panel. Um, so this first one is we want to make um, help agent writable uh, for 
the users in the help desk support team. This is the security group that you just created. And then we want this applicable in the new edit and display forms. And once you've said all that, you can hit save and you'll see it show up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, make sure you're clicking the publish button often, just so that if you get tripped up or something like that, you don't lose work. Okay, and then we have a similar rule, which just says that we want this to be uh, readable. We want the person who submits the ticket to see who's working on their ticket, but not modify it. So we have this handy option under the users and groups where you can say not in. So we're going to say if you're not in help desk support, we want this field to be read only. Uh, they will not be able to edit it. Okay, so we're going to use a similar kind of pattern for manager notes. Um, in this case, what we want is for the help desk manager to be able to edit in that section. We'd like the help desk support team to be able to see the manager's notes but not change them. And then if you're not in the help desk support team, we want this to be hidden completely. So uh, all these situations can be set uh, using these permission rules. So once you've created the rules, um, if you've done a good job with your descriptions, it should like the, look like this in your right sidebar. Uh, you have a nice friendly description to help remind you what you've created. So you said write if it's the help desk manager, read if it's help desk support, um, and deny if it's not help desk support. Um, just kind of helps you have notes to, to remind you what you've done. Okay, so we're going to do a uh, quick quiz here. Um, so go ahead and um, look through this. Go ahead and pause the video at this time and see how many of these questions you can answer. And when you're ready, go ahead and unpause and uh, we'll cover the answers. All right, so here's the answers to our section one quiz. Uh, when you begin your solution, you always need to begin by creating the list and then the fields in the list. Uh, there's no way around that. This is always the first step in the process. Sublists are created by using the InfoWise associated item content type. If you remember, that's where we went into the advanced settings, allowed management of content types, and went through a series of steps. The InfoWise design screen um, is the hub for the uh, InfoWise settings, so that's the main screen you've seen after you click on the puzzle pieces icon. Uh, the most common custom InfoWise field is the color choice field, so that's one you want to use early and often. Really easy to use and it makes your interface look nice. Um, the three types of indicators, progress bar, KPI, and countdown. Um, after you have uh, created all your fields, you're going to go in to do the uh, form designer, which is it uh, allows you to do the tabs, and we did permissions as well. Um, and once your form is created, you want to make sure you're test, you test editing uh, early and often each time you make a round of configuration changes. Um, column permissions can be done in the form designer tool. There are three permission levels. You've got write, write read or deny. And then the, the uh, three SharePoint forms, which can be independently controlled, are the new edit and view forms. All right, so uh, that covered our first section. Um, so a uh, lot to cover there, but um, we're going to, um, that completes kind of the first of uh, four main sections that we're doing for this. Okay, so we're on to the next section, section two. So these are some of the concepts we're going to uh, do in the next part of the training. Um, we want to achieve these features and functionality. So we're going to have the request or default to the current user. We want to restrict permissions for the new form. We want that to be simple and uh, we want to hide a lot of extra fields and information that really only apply later in the process. Uh, we want our due date to get auto set uh, according to when the ticket gets created. Uh, we want to test out the progress bar. Uh, we want the help agent to assign the category, and um, we want status to be updated when the ticket's first edited after it's created. 
We need to clean up the dashboards a little bit, uh, test out associated items functionality. Uh, we want to do a uh, timer action for our current date, and then we're going to do some history logging. So these are some of the types of functionality that we're going to do in the next part of the training. Oh, just trying to get it to go to the next slide. Uh, there we go. Okay, so um, the requester field. So when somebody creates a ticket, we shouldn't have to have them put in their own name. The system knows who they are. We want it to just go ahead and default. Luckily, that's really easy for us to do. Okay, so you're going to go back to Form Designer, and whenever you're applying settings to a field, you just click on the field to set its context, and that opens up the uh, context menu on the right side, and you can apply settings. So this is a rule, it's a dynamic rule, and when I go into the value box, I have an option that I can pick, which is current user in square brackets. Um, and we want this to occur on the new form only. Uh, so go ahead and create this rule and save it. And once we publish out those changes, we wanna go back and test our form. And what you will see is that when you go to create a ticket, it will automatically populate with your own name without you having to do anything. Um, so making it nice and easy for our users. Okay, so we need to do some restriction on permissions for the new form. And this is about cleaning up the process and making things as easy as possible for users. We shouldn't be showing all of the fields when somebody first creates a ticket because they're really just doing a few things. They're just reporting the issue, so we really shouldn't show all of that. <clears throat> so we just want them to see the uh, ticket, description, requester, really just that information on the new form only. We don't need these other tabs or anything. So we want to apply some settings to make that happen. So you're going to repeat the same pattern over and over. What you need to do is go into the individual um, fields and you want to set them as hide on new. Um, so you'll, of course, put that description in, select hidden, and make sure it applies just to the new form and save. And you're gonna repeat that process uh, for many of the fields. Now, remember that I said there's usually a pair of fields. So we described that we wanna hide it on new. We also need to say that it is writable for the edit and display form. So make sure you pair off those permissions rules and repeat those for each of these fields that we're uh, going to hide on the new form. Okay, so that's the send message one. So we we confirm that, we publish the changes, make sure that does what you think, and now that we know how that works and we're familiar with the settings, uh, we can go back and you're going to do the very same thing uh, for each of the other fields, and that's how we're going to hide that from the new form. So do that for all these seven fields for ticket updates and then go back and do that also for the manager notes. Okay, so um, the rules that you're putting in um, in combination, um, make sure that things work how you want. Um, so this is just exhibiting how, the, how that works uh, in combination. Okay, so once you've set all those rules, when you go to your new form, it should be nice and clean it should just show these simple questions, only what we need to ask of the requester and nothing else. So a very user-friendly experience. Okay, we want our due date to get auto set. As a standard for our system, we're gonna say that when somebody puts in a help, help ticket, we're setting a due date of seven days after it's created automatically. Okay, so just like before, I need to set the due date as in context, and I want a rule for that. Once again, this is a dynamic rule. Uh, luckily, this one's pretty easy to do. You have a today function, and you can just put plus seven after that, and it will be smart enough to know uh, that means seven days later than that date. So the current date uh, plus seven days. And as we keep doing on our other stuff, we always want to check our settings and make sure this works as expected. So after creating the ticket, the due date is auto-populated um, with the current date plus seven. So um, 
this is just there automatically and nobody needs to fill that in. Okay, so going back to our dashboard, now we're seeing some things filled in. Notice that on time indicator is there, that was that KPI flag. Um, and then um, we have information for, for to, till due. It's telling us how many days until the due date. Okay, next thing we wanna try that progress bar. So if I go in and update this ticket to 60% and come back to the dashboard, now you can see what the progress bar is about. It gives us a nice visual indicator that helps us see how far along um, those tickets are. Okay. Um, a business role that we need to accomplish is that we need the help agent and category to be assigned when it's first edited. Um, so we want to make sure nothing falls to the cracks. We want to have a nice uh, kind of airtight system where we just don't have missing information when the, after those tickets come in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is you go into the help agent field and we need some validation roles. So SharePoint has validation uh, in the list settings, but the problem with that is it doesn't allow for dynamic settings. It really just lets you set whether a field's required or not, and we need more options. So in the form designer, when you go into validation, it gives you a lot more options on how to configure that. So what we want to do is require this on the first edit. So what we're saying is that um, the column should be not equal to blank. Um, and then you can put in your own error message. So we say help agent re required. And uh, on applying forms, you notice I have the option to make this enforced just on the edit form. And then what you should do is use the validate empty columns option. Just as a standard, you should do that. Okay, and then also we need to check for category. Um, so it starts out by default as unassigned, but once we get into the edit form, we need to make sure that it does get set. So uh, we're checking to make sure that it's not equal to unassigned, and then you put you know category required as the message to the user if they don't do this. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna publish those settings in form designer, and then we're gonna bounce back out to the form and check that and make sure the validation works as expected. So you really need to kind of check all situations. So this validation is supposed to be happening only on the edit form. So one thing I'm checking here is to make sure that uh, I don't get any uh, false triggers, so to speak. So on the new form, you know, there's no problem. It doesn't stop me or give a validation message. But once you go in to edit that ticket, if I go in there and try to update the ticket and I don't put in the help agent or category, it's gonna bark at me. And you see those error messages, which I was able to define myself. So I'm not gonna be able to save out of that form until I put in the required information. Okay, so once you put it in there, those validation messages will uh, disappear right away, even before you click the button. Okay, and, what, and also we want to update status, so we kind of miss one here, and we need to go back and do that. So another field here, we want status um, to be uh, uh, filled in. We don't want that value being not assigned when you do an edit. So it's just some additional validation. So I go back and check the form again, and uh, as I want, it's now stopping me if I try to save the ticket, leaving status as not assigned. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and update our home page. Um, so go back out under that banner on your home page, and we'll just go ahead and use the um, SharePoint modern uh, list view web part as shown. Um, so we kind of have like a home dashboard here on your home page. Okay, next thing I want to do is want to check out that associated items functionality. So um, if you remember, we created that field called tasks, and we just want to go in there and we just want to see how it works. So as you can see, um, it opens up uh, a new form in the shadow box, and um, it just creates, collects basic information about the task, and I can add as many tasks as I want to to a ticket. So that kind of just shows you how it works. 
we do want to kind of clean up that view a little bit. Um, it doesn't look exactly how I want. Um, so we want a uh, color choice for tickets tasks for, um, for status because that's easy to do and it just makes it look nice. Okay, and then we're going to change the all items view. So we just want the task and the status. We don't need details because that can be really long, right? And now um, it looks a little cleaner in our uh, ticket. Notice when you go to the list view dashboard, you can click um, next to that associated items field for tasks and it will open up an accordion section and show you a list of those tasks. So even without having to go into the ticket, um, I can kind of browse through those from the uh, from the main screen. Okay, next thing we're going to do is our first action. So InfoWise has some awesome functionality where you can do automation and um, workflow uh, uh, from these settings. So without having to use any other kind of tools, you can do some automation. The first thing that we're going to make is an action to update our uh, current date field every day for us. So when you go into this interface, um, it's a kind of a wizard, or that's how I think of it. You work your way through these four tabs and you start with the general settings. So this is an update list item action type. That's the most common, commonly used action type. And you just give it a name and description. So we're updating current date field every day. And then uh, you'll check off next to timer based and we want that to run every day uh, for us, just at midnight. Uh, that's how we want this to work. M most of the time, many times, you don't need to change anything in the second tab under advanced settings. And in this case, you can just leave that alone. In the third tab, you're going to set the current date field um, to today. It's the um, today function. It'll just give it the current date. By default, items is going to say ID equals ID, just because that's a very typical and usual setting, but just make sure that's what you see there. And all that really says is just to do that to the current item. And then when you do a timer action, you always do have to set a condition. It, it will validate and force you to do that. We want this to happen for all of the list records, so just say ID always not equals to zero, meaning every item in the list. Once you create the action, you'll see it listed in a uh, manifest at the top of your screen. Uh, you know that it's been created at that point, and then you can close out. All right, we want to have some uh, logging. Um, you know, we don't we don't want to know just what's happening necessarily only at the exact time with the ticket. We might like to see a history of things that take place. Imagine if you had a help desk ticket that had been stalled for three or four weeks and you have an angry user and they're complaining and saying that they, you know, provided all the information, there's no response, et cetera. The a history log would help demonstrate the activity that's happened on that ticket over time. So really we want to tell the story of the whole life of the help desk ticket, not just a snapshot of its current state. And we have a really good way to do that using uh, ultimate forms. So we're going to make a history field, and we're going to put it in a history tab in our form. So this will be a SharePoint multi-line text field. We want to use the Enhanced Rich Text option. And make sure you do not have Add to Default View Check, because this is going to get long. We don't want to show it out on that dashboard. Uh, it won't look very nice that way. OK, so we need to create a history tab using the same process as before, and we'll add our history field to that tab. Um, following some of the other se same settings, we, we want to hide that on new and uh, make it. This is going to be a read only field. Our system's going to be updating this. No users, even the admin level users, are going to update this. So it's read only for edit and display for everybody. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is create an action for logging uh, history for new ticket. <clears throat> so let's just make a log entry when the ticket is first created. So um, just put the settings on the first tab. Run on events should have just the uh, new option checked. And then um, defaults for advanced settings. And then 
in here, I'm going to set um, a value for history. Now, you see some formatting code in here. This is some simple HTML. Um, you're going to see this is basically to dress things up a little bit. You don't technically have to do all this formatting code, um, but it's going to make kind of for a nicer UI. All we're really trying to do is put this in a box and do some background colors and shading uh, just to make things look nice. So you can just copy this code, and, and if you're not familiar with HTML or CSS or things like that, don't worry about it. Just put it in the code that you see in here, um, and um, you know it's pretty easy to tweak if you wanted to. Okay, and then also when the status changes, we want to make a log entry uh, for that as well. So this one's different. Run on events for this is going to be for the edit form, defaults on advance, and then you see similar code. So if you just enter the code like you see at the bottom of the screen, um, again, this is kind of writing some HTML into the interface. Um, and uh, it isn't necessary, but it's just a way to kind of make our history walk look a little bit nicer. And on this particular one, we need a condition because we're trying to uh, catch for a particular trigger. What we're doing is listening for a particular specific change. What we want to know is when the status field gets updated. And that's the only time we want this history log entry to be entered. So this is status after change and then whatever new value it changes to. And that will be the only time that would be triggered. Okay, another thing that we're going to catch, if you remember, we have a send message field. So this is another edit one and van settings defaults again. Um, and some of this is just copy and paste. Um, if you'll notice, it's following the same pattern with this code, so you don't have to rewrite this, but there's just some tweaks and adjustments to that. Um, and the trigger for this one is whenever that send message isn't blank, okay, whenever somebody fills a value in for that. Now, based on that trigger, we need to clear that out, that send message field. So if somebody uses that to send a message, we need to reset it um, on the save. So um, we'll do an action for that. This would be to uh, clear out the um, message box, a new and edit. And uh, defaults are just going to be standard set up there for advanced settings, just use defaults. Uh, we want set, send message to be blank. Um, and Notice also the sequence of actions matter. See the little drop down arrows? I can control the order of these. I want this to happen last, okay? So I'm gonna just put that at the bottom of my actions list. What do I always gotta do? I gotta test my functionality. So what you can do is go into your dummy tickets and just make some updates and see if it's doing what you think it's gonna do. So you can see what that formatting code was about. We kind of have a, the uh, user and a date timestamp to show when a particular event happened. And then we have a uh, um, kind of a formatted message describing that. So that's what the history log is doing. It's appending information in here as events happen. Okay, so we've got another quiz. Um, so you can go ahead and pause now for a second and um, just pull out your notepad and uh, see how many of um, these you can figure out based on the uh, settings that we did in this section. All right, so here's some answers to our section two quiz. Um, the current user function was the uh, function which allows us to automatically populate with the uh, person logged in. Uh, we were hiding fields on the new form using the dynamic rules setting. Uh, that's where you click on the uh, field and then in the right panel you can, uh, under rules, you can go in there and create a new rule and pick uh, dynamic rules. The form is laid out and configured using form designer. So. Um, that's the term you'll hear over and over again. That's the drag and drop interface that we go in and uh, tweak our form. Uh, our example in the quiz, if you wanted to automatically set a date field to the current day plus 10, it would be the today function uh, plus 10. Um, in order to make sure empty fields are validated, um, at the very bottom of those uh, rules, you have an option that says validate empty columns. Um, normally, that's what you're going to use. By default, you're going to use that option. 
Um, I would encourage many times in our training, make sure you click on that publish button. That's the publish action in the upper left to save changes. So do that early, do it often. The list view web part, that's what we added to our homepage. Um, it just shows a copy of that list and we're using that to just um, show that on the main page as our main screen. The timer action was what we used to uh, set up a timed action to iterate through our list records and update a field every day. The history log is what we've created in the last section and that's useful to keep a running log of important activity <clears throat> on your record. Um, and that can be done uh, using the multi-line enhanced rich text field. So that, that's the field we're using to store that formatted uh, information that we showed. All right, so we made it through um, that section. So uh, now we'll be on to section three. All right, well, good job staying with me this thus far. Uh, it's a lot of information to cover. Um, so um, <clears throat> if you are, uh, kind of a little overwhelmed or you got smoke coming out of yours, that kind of thing, feel free to take a break, you know, take it in bite-sized pieces. Um, sometimes it helps to kind of review or repeat steps maybe more than once, um, uh, especially for those who are newer to SharePoint or, or newer to form design concepts and things like that it can be a lot to absorb, but um, it, uh, it comes with uh, practice. So it'll, it'll become more familiar as you do it over and over again. Um, so we're just past the halfway mark. So now we're into section three. We're going to do some more functionality. So we want to cover a case based on business rules where we conditionally show a field and require it. Um, we want to have a dynamic formatted header. And along with all this, we want to have some pop-up help in the screen and also uh, kind of change the look of the form. We're going to use fragments um, to put some content into the form. Um, and then um, we want to have, uh, we want to create some kind of auxiliary tools and information. So part of that's going to be an advanced search page that we'll make in our site. Um, and then with any type of system, we really want to have some email alert uh, roles and templates to generate some uh, emails based on certain events uh, happening with our tool. All right, so uh, conditionally show and require a field. Here we go. Okay, we're going to make another field. This will be in the tickets list, and we're going to call that field hardware details. Another multi-line text. This will be enhanced rich text. Make sure it's not added to the default view. And just go ahead and add that under uh, category and your ticket updates tab. Okay, you need a pair of rules um, for the uh, column permissions. Um, so it's uh, deny um, for, based on the value of the form. So um, if, it, if the category is hardware, what we wanna have happen is make it writable. Um, and then also we need to do validation. So if we're doing hardware we're going to have um, when the length is more than what the length, the validation is going to be what the length to be more than zero for category hardware. So these, these rules work in combination with each other. We're doing two things at once. Okay. And then you want to test it out. And so what's cool is in the user interface, when you change the value in the category picker, Hardware details will pop in and out of view dynamically, even before you save the form. Um, and also the validation is enforced dynamically. Um, it wouldn't do us a lot of good if we just showed the hardware details and then somebody either didn't notice or just decided not to fill it out. We wanna make sure we get that required information. Um, so test that out. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is just to make the form look a little bit nicer. We're gonna have a uh, a header we're going to put on there. So to do that, what we're going to use is uh, the fragment control. You can just drag that out onto your canvas and place it directly above the uh, tabbed interface. Um, and once you have that, you can click in there and you're going to see an edit content option in the right uh, context settings area. That opens up a visual editor tool. <clears throat> once you have that open, 
you can do something cool. You can actually insert column values into that header. So you see those references to fields in there uh, in square brackets. So what I want it to show me is the uh, value of the ticket field along with category and status. And then also I've done some things to kind of make it larger and I want it to be highlighted in green. Um, so now if somebody's got a ticket open, um, it's kind of got some summary information showing as a dyna dynamic header in the top. And you can make that look however you want. You can kind of tw tweak the look of that um, in, the, um, in the designer tool. Okay, also um, we're going to do some things. We want to add pop-up help and we're going to change the uh, theme. So notice the theme option under tab. So I switched that over to impact and you can see that kind of changes the way that the uh, tabs look at the top. Okay, and then kind of some quality of life improvements. We want to have a border in our form. So uh, we're going to add uh, some styles. So you have style option. Now what's cool here is that you don't necessarily have to do CSS. Notice I've got kind of a user-friendly color picker for border. And I just pick solid in the drop down and pick one pixel in the drop down and that'll put a nice uh, border along the side of my form. So I want to do that for each of the tabs. This is actually something I want to put around the, uh, the tab section of the form, each of them. Uh, we're going to have some padding, just kind of space it out. So I'm um, also adding under custom styles, I'm adding 10 pixels of padding. Once again, you want to do this for each of the tab sections in your form. And then in the um, field, you have an option which says show description as pop up. So that's what you call pop up help. This is especially beneficial if you have a long help description. You don't necessarily want to show that all the time, just if people need extra help. So here's kind of showing you a long message showing in the uh, pop-up help. Okay, so after this, we're going to we're gonna actually insert, if you remember, I had a process diagram showing the process for help desk tickets. So another thing you can do is use an image control or a fragment. So... Um, there's our diagram that we looked at earlier. We want to just go ahead and stick that right into the form. First, you got to get it loaded into your site assets. Um, so um, all I did was just upload uh, this image and then use the copy link option. And you can come out here and drag an image control into the form in the history tab under the history field. And it just needs a path to the image, right? You just have to tell it where the image is. And once you do that, it'll immediately appear on your form. Okay, so I'm just gonna check my form. So it's just kind of a, a reference that I'm baking into my form for users to look at. So you can see how um, a diagram or visual reference might help those users to uh, know what they're supposed to do. Okay, another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have an advanced search page. So if I'm gonna do a search, I first need to create a search profile before I make that page. So I go back to the um, InfoWise Design Settings Hub and what I wanna do is pick uh, List Search. Um, and there's a, some basic configuration options. What we're looking for is to provide a search tool specifically for tickets. I don't need it to uh, include any other lists or anything like that. So I just fill in the options like you see in the screen um, and then um, go on to the next part. So <clears throat> we need a page to hold a web part which will have our list search. So go to your site contents, add a new page, and you can just call that ticket search. And then in the page, this is a, uh, a modern page, we want to add the InfoWise list search web part. So click on the plus icon and then pick that web part. Once you got it in there, um, you go into the settings for that web part and in the right bar, you're going to see in the drop down the profile which you created in the previous step. 
Okay, and then also I mentioned this at the very early part of the training. It's helpful to go ahead and put in links to these things in your left site navigation. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just updating that navigation because I want it to be easy to get to ticket search. And then you can go ahead and try that out. There is a simple and advanced mode. You can toggle into the advanced mode. Um, you can play around with that. Um, but this just kind of provides a nice user-friendly search tool. And you can imagine uh, if we got into a point where there's thousands of help tickets that this could be really valuable. All right, so now we're gonna talk about email alerts. Um, so out of the box, email alerts and SharePoint is pretty limited. So if you, um, you know, if you're working with that kind of thing, I think you're really gonna be happy because there are a lot of options um, with InfoWise um, in terms of how you can set these up. So uh, we'll be covering all those different kind of options now. So um, email configuration is access to the ribbon. It's right next to the puzzle pieces. Um, just click on the orange bell where it says add alert and that'll bring you into this alert screen. First thing you want to do always is create the content of the email first. It just works out best this way. So think about what you want to be in the message that's going to go out. To get to that, go to the um, mail templates section and click on the add or update mail template. In this screen, you're going to see a visual editor tool and it allows you to put in both static and dynamic content. Um, so you can enter information and then also using the right bar, you can uh, insert fields uh, which will contain the dynamic information from that individual record. Um, so you just click on the columns on the right and use the add to subject or add to body links. And then in, in the bottom, you see some options here. These are some advanced options. One in particular I'll call out that could be very important is share template. Um, because in many cases you're collaborating with other users and you want to allow them the chance to make updates to the template as well. Okay, so we're going to start by creating a template for when there's a new help desk ticket. Uh, go ahead and give it a name. Uh, the convention I like is the name of the list with the dash and then describing the situation. So that's why I use tickets dash new ticket. Um, usually I like to use the same name for the actual email alert rule later. And then in the subject line, um, usually everything related to a tool, I like to put the name of the tool in parentheses. So I just put help desk support and um, we're putting in the uh, ticket in there and the ticket title. <clears throat> um, so you see that shows up in square brackets. So you've got some static information and some dynamic information that'll be in there. Uh, we want the name of the person who, who made the request. And then we're just dropping information into the content area. Um, you know, just standard kind of for a new help request has been submitted. Um, and um, reporting out that information. Um, just about always when you're doing an email alert, you will want to include the edit item link. And this is very simple. It is just a hyperlink which goes directly to this SharePoint list record. So when the user gets the email, if they click the link in the bottom of the email, it will take them right into SharePoint to that specific form. Okay, and now you can see we can really make things look a lot nicer. So you can add a uh, image in the bottom. We can do some highlighting and coloring um, to make things stand out, maybe make it look a little bit uh, nicer. We don't have to have just small black and white text. Okay, once you've saved that, it's gonna show up in the templates list. So again, you wanna create the content template first and then it becomes available when you get to the step where you have to match up the uh, content template to your email alert rule. Okay, so we need to create a rule. We're gonna test our first template. So um, we're going to want this to go to the uh, requester. 
that's a recipient. Um, and you might copy yourself. Um, you can change this uh, however you want. You can actually adjust the from settings. That's a bit more of an advanced topic, but you can actually control the email address from which it's generating. Okay, so we want this to happen um, specifically when an item is added to this list. We want it to happen immediately. And then you just go in the mail template section and in the drop down picker, you just pick the name of the content template which you just created. Once you do that, you're going to see that email alert will show up on the manifest on the top of the page. Um, and then people who you assign to this explicitly, they'll get a notification just to clue them in that you've assigned them this to this email alert role. Um, so uh, just something to be aware of. So go ahead and create a ticket and you want to try this out. So here's just an example one. This is for Citrix login problem. In this case, the user happened to put an image because it's a rich text field. Um, so, um, you know, create a ticket and, and check and make sure that email goes out. Usually these content templates take a lot of tweaking. Um, just because you want it to look nice, you're going to think of other things you might want to include in there. Um, you're going to want to adjust the font size, the formatting, all that kind of stuff. So um, don't get too caught up on having the content template perfect the first go around because it always do, it does go through a lot of iterations and changes. That's just how things typically go. Um, what you should do is kind of make a list even before you attempt all your email alerts of the different situations that you want to deal with. So when a, uh, the, this is a list of what we want in our system. We just did the first one. When a new alert, um, or when a new uh, help desk ticket comes in, we want um, an email to go out. When the ticket gets assigned to a help agent, um, we want the help agent to know as well as the requester. We'd like an email when status changes. Uh, we'd like one when the send message function is used. Uh, when the manager adds notes. Um, and then a nag alert if this goes past due. So these are the situations that we want to cover. So we kind of have a, um, a checklist, if you will, of the different situations that we want to deal with. Okay, so just a general guidance. Usually once you start to get the pattern down as far as the content template, especially uh, in a particular tool, you tend to reuse the same pattern. You typically want to use the same font size, same formatting, things like that. To, to uh, speed up your process, what you can do is go into an existing one and just uh, select all, copy, and then you can paste it into the body of another template. And so rather than starting from blank, you're, you're starting by just modifying from another one. Okay, so uh, just paste that content in, and this is for help agent assign. So go, go ahead and update your subject line and your body. Um, and you can do this however you want. I'm just showing an example of a way that you could do it. And then, um, again, the pattern is content template first and then the actual email alert rule itself. So in this case, what we're looking for is um, when the help agent field after change gets updated and you're putting in the name of that person that is the time when you want the email to go out. And in this case, it's when it's a modify on the record. So on those four drop downs, make sure you're using the second one. This is specifically for when the record is modified. And I want to use the tickets help agent assign, which is the template I just made. Just like before, it's just like updating your form. You always test right away for each individual alert. Okay, so this one announces this ticket's been assigned to Vladimir Gubler, um, and then um, shows who the requester is and summary information like that. All right, so next one up is status changes. Uh, as you can imagine, people want to know when the status gets updated, especially stuff like uh, when it gets marked complete. Okay, so for status change, what we're looking for is status after change equals status. Whenever, whenever the status field gets updated, 
and only when the status field gets updated. We obviously wouldn't want an email to go out um, just every time the ticket's edited, uh, only when the status changes. Uh, so this is on a modify. We'll use status change. Check that out. Okay, so this one says, all right, Citrus login problems, status change to in progress. Okay, this is correlated to the send message function. If you remember, we created a send message field, and what we're doing is listening for a change to this, and this will um, be a way um, to facilitate communication back and forth between the requester and the help desk agent. Okay, and in this case, what we're looking for is just if it, uh, when this gets updated, um, do that ticket. So the user comes in and says, I'm still having problems. Can you please give me a call? You know, they're getting frustrated. It gives them a way to follow up with the help desk team. Um, so this goes in, the help desk agent gets this message um, and kind of facilitate that way. Okay, this one's for if the manager adds notes. Um, this might be that he's directing his staff, his help desk team to do something. Um, so if manager notes gets updated, um, this is manager telling his help desk team member, hey, this is priority, we need to jump on this. Um, so this one kind of is loud, stands out, we've got it highlighted in pink, so we want that help desk agent to uh, pay attention. All right, and then this is pass. Okay, this is probably over the top. I've got this highlighted in red. Um, this one is when that ticket is gone past due. We want our system to automatically start sending this out for us. So this one's a little different. We're using um, the date option, and what we are telling the system is every day for uh, up to 30 days, we want it to check. And if the due date is... Um, uh, less than the current date, I meaning we've gone past the due date, and the status isn't complete or canceled, it's going to send out this sort of angry email saying, what the heck, this is overdue and it's not closed, you know, it's, it's, it's important. So that's why it's set to be attention grabbing. And this uses the, the uh, fourth drop down uh, for a date, since that's the uh, type of alert we're doing. Okay, so we did finally make it to the end on section three. Here's our quiz for that. Um, so go ahead and pause your video for a second and again, kind of take a stab at this and see how many of these 10 questions you've got the answers for. Okay, so permissions and validation settings are what we use to conditionally show and to require uh, the field based on dynamic conditions. We use the fragment control um, with inserted columns in order to do that header. The custom look and feel that was done using style settings. Um, if you want to insert additional content into the forms, you can use either image or fragment controls. Um, when you're doing email templates, um, recall that I said uh, that we start first by creating the content for the mail template before you create the actual email alert rule. Um, and when you're doing that at the bottom, you almost always will want to include the edit item link at the bottom of your email content templates. Um, when you're naming your mail Templates, usually you want to use the names that match the email alerts. That just will make your life a lot easier, um, as, especially as you accumulate a lot of those. Um, when, I, when you do the content for the uh, email template, um, I mentioned that it'll save you some time if you do uh, copy and paste from the content of a preceding template. Uh, mail can go either to an explicit email address or you can go to one specified by the form field. There's several options there, um, so um, those are some different things that you can do there. If you needed a list of or changes on a field, the pattern that we were using there is where you use the uh, field name and then you just say after change and then you can repeat that reference to the field name. And that will only trigger when that particular field gets updated to a new value. Okay, uh, we made it to the end of section three, um, so good job. We're now on the home stretch. We'll move on to section four and uh, finish off our help desk system.
All right, we're on to section four. Um, in this last section, we're going to do some additional functionality. We're going to do a calendar page. Uh, we'll do building a chart, uh, custom printing. We'll do item printing, list print, calendar print. Uh, we'll create a user facing action and a uh, timer action. So, so those are some of the things that we're going to cover in our last section. All right, so uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do uh, like a month view calendar page. So uh, kind of like the uh, search profile that we set up, what we first need to do is um, create an event calendar profile. So from the InfoWise settings screen, uh, you go to um, click on event calendars. And then what you do is create a profile uh, like you would see on screen. So we're going to call this tickets dash calendar. We'll use the month view. And then um, we just point it to our tickets list. And then it, uh, we need to set a few things to let it know uh, which view, uh, which should show in the title, what the start date is, et cetera. Um, there is also another option, which is really nice. It's show additional columns and hover. So when you're on the calendar view, and you hover over that calendar entry, it'll give us that detail information that we want. So go ahead and use that. Pick some of the options like I showed there um, so that we can test it out and see how it'll work. And um, then we can add it. Okay, once you've created the calendar profile, um, what we're going to do is create another page like we did for ticket search. Um, and we're going to call this tickets calendar. And as before, we're going to add a web part. And this time, we're going to pick the InfoWise Event Calendar Plus web part. And when you go into the settings, as was the case with the search web part, you'll see the uh, profile. So we created this profile called Tickets Calendar. I just need to select that. And once I do, you're going to see the content in the middle of your page get populated. And you can see some of my tickets showing up on the screen there. And when you hover over an event, you're going to get that detailed information. So that's what you're seeing here. I'm actually hovering over an event, and it expands out, shows me a window, and shows me some detail information. When you click on an event from the calendar, that takes you to the view form for the ticket. So that's more detailed information, even beyond the hover, uh, if somebody wanted to see that. You have another option in the um, web part. Um, so you can look at it in a daily view, weekly, monthly, um, or you can do uh, a Gantt view, uh, as you see in this case. So lots of ways to look at that uh, date information. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put together a chart. Um, so if I go to the uh, InfoWise settings hub, if you click on charts, uh, we can go ahead and make a profile for that. So you got to you got to do this first before we can make a page and add the web part. <clears throat> so I'm going to make a new profile and I'm going to work my way through these tabs. Charts have a lot of configuration settings and options, so you have to go through all these four tabs. All right, so this one's going to be called tickets-chart. And then for the category x-axis, I'm using status. Um, we're going to do tickets by status. Um, and then the uh, series, I want to count. Um, then by status. For the display, um, I'm going to do the column chart type. Um, there are actually lots of options. I believe there's 35 different kinds of charts. Um, then we'll use the uh, options that you see in the boxes here. And then I do need to set a width and a height um, to tell how, how big this chart should appear on the page. Um, title. You can uh, go ahead and put in your own title information. You can set font and font size and, and coloring and things like that. So lots of look and feel options. Um, you can set borders and things like that. Um, typically, this takes a lot of experimentation. Um, so you need to try different configuration settings, um, and tweak things. Um, you'll start to uh, get a feel for you know, what you want to set to make it look nice. So once I have my chart profile created, I can go back to the site contents area and um, I can create a page um, which will hold my chart. Okay, so here's my tickets chart page. 
And of course, I need to add my web part. So this one's called InfoWise Smart Chart. Um, I want to add the web part to my page. Um, and then in the right bar, um, I'm going to see the um, option to uh, pick the chart. So chart title, go ahead and use the exact same name of the profile. Uh, set your width and height. And you're going to see that um, chart show up in the middle of your page. There's our chart. Okay, so here's my tickets. It's just counting up. So this is just a basic example. Um, you can play around. There's lots of chart art options. You can do line charts and pie charts and stack charts and all kinds of different things. So um, you can kind of experiment, try different things for that. All right, so now we're going to go on to printing. So there's some really excellent print capabilities. So you don't really have print capabilities per se in SharePoint for printing, uh, especially list records or list view summaries, but you can do that with um, the ultimate forms options. So if you go into um, the settings screen and pick print and export, um, <laughs> we can go in here and um, first thing you'll notice when you go in here, you've got either a sample or advanced mode for the item print template. And normally the simple option is going to be easiest, fastest, best to use. Advanced would be in a situation where you need to come up with a very particular print template where say you were trying to match a uh, pre-existing view that somebody had provided you, the advanced mode would allow for that. In our example, we're going to do simple. Uh, you can go ahead and add section headers and pick fields and add uh, like you see on my screen. Um, and then in the second section under display, you can customize and add some uh, formatted information for header and footer. Notice there's some options at the bottom. You can use parameters like um, the now parameter or me parameter, and it'll insert some dynamic information for you. Um, and then, um, you know, as you'd normally do, like when you're a browser, you print, you can, you can do some settings for the page. You can do the uh, landscape or orientation. You can set margins, uh, lots of options like that. So you typically default options are fine. So just start with that and then you can come back out to your dashboard, just like our other stuff. We want to test it out and uh, we'll just click on this print icon. That's a custom uh, InfoWise Ultimate Forms action. And it opens up a print dialog, and it'll give you a preview of that even before you do it. My experience, I really like the PDF output the best. Um, there are other options there that you can try. Um, if you do the email option, it'll uh, email a PDF for you. Um, but when you click on this, it'll actually produce the PDF um, and uh, you know download it locally on your computer. Okay, so now we're going to do a list print template. Okay, so we just did item, so we're going to try the next option. Um, there's actually three options. The third one's calendar. We'll come to that in a minute. So list is kind of like the uh, list view dashboard. You're just printing a, a summary of multiple records. Um, so these ones are even easier. Usually you can just use the items that are in the view because that's kind of what you're doing is you're duplicating the list view dashboard. Um, so I'll just use that option. Um, just like before, I'll give it like a custom header, just to make it look nice. And then come back out and test print for the um, list view dashboard. And you see the name of the template at the top. And um, this is the kind of output you, you get. So um, this is, just gives you uh, summary information across multiple tickets. Okay, and then the other option was the uh, calendar print option. Um, so this one uh, lets you do something according to your calendar. Um, notice you've got date and date filters at the top, so you can actually filter to particular dates right there from the print view. Um, this one I'm showing um, a Gantt view for that printout. All right, another thing you can do, which is great, you can actually create a function, a user-facing action, and that's what we'll do. Um, we want to have a button the user can click on. Um, and what we're going to have is where it'll um, send a report to a library for us. So we're going to make a, uh, a new library from our site content screen. And this will hold uh, some PDF reports for us. So we'll call it PDF reports. Go back to that actions area from the InfoWise settings screen. 
and we're going to create an action, a different type of action. This one's an action called print list item. So pick that option. Make sure in the run on events, we have nothing checked there because uh, we're doing a user facing action. So we are gonna use advanced settings in this case. We're gonna use the manual execution. You can pick whatever icon you want for that. And we're gonna set up this action which will be triggered by a button. Um, so we've got some settings we need to put in here. What we're doing is we're trying to trigger that PDF output to be created and sent to that local SharePoint library. Um, so um, we just need to pick the name of the template which we set up earlier say that we want the format to be PDF. And um, our print target in this case will be to that document library. Notice for file name, you can use dynamic references. So the file's gonna be actually named help test ticket, and then it's gonna insert the ticket ID and the current date. So we get a unique name for the file. Um, and then, it, and then um, I can put that PDF reports as the destination. Okay, so as always, we wanna test it out. So in the menu, you have this option that says run action. So this is the user facing button that you just created. So when you click on that, you're gonna see a shadow box pop up and in there is a button and this is the action you just made. It's called create ticket PDF. So the user can click on that and once they do, they'll get a confirmation dialog and we wanna check and make sure. So if you go to your PDF report, so instead of it downloading locally to the computer, this went ahead and um, made the report and put it in the local library for us. Okay, next one is a uh, timer-based section. Let's just say we don't want people to have to do anything. We want those reports to happen on their own without anybody clicking a button. Um, you can actually do um, a print action that runs on a timer. So this one, we're gonna have it run every Sunday night for us at 11 p.m. Um, run on events, I'm gonna use timer-based. And notice I use weekly on Sunday, 11 p.m. So this will happen even if I'm not logged into SharePoint or anything. It just happens on its own. Um, similar action settings as before. Um, we're just defining the uh, output, the print output. Timer actions always do require a condition, so we'll just um, say ID uh, not equal zero, and that'll work fine. All right, we got to the final quiz, so uh, go ahead and pause for a second once again and try to go through our 10 questions and see how many of these you can get. All right, so uh, here's our section four quiz answers. Um, to do a calendar, you first uh, create a page to hold the web part. You have to have a uh, container for that. That's after you do the configuration. Um, you have to do the profile and the event calendar title must match. Um, so hopefully you caught that when we're going through the settings. Make sure that you uh, have those match up. The Gantt view of the calendar, um, this could be helpful if you had a lot of events. Um, that's, that was one kind of view that you can use. In the calendar, you can use a cal category filter control. Um, so if you do get into a situation with a lot of events, that's a way where you can limit how much is shown in particular view. So that is an option in the calendar. You can do as many as 35 different chart type options. Um, print templates, we had two modes. You can either use simple or advanced. Most of the time, simple is gonna work just fine. Uh, the three type of print templates that we covered, those are item, list, and calendar. Usually the item print template is the one that you're gonna use the most often. Um, the calendar type print template has a uh, filter on it for to pick for various dates right from the print screen. When you do the user facing action, make sure none of the run on events checkboxes are selected, otherwise you can have multiple triggers there, that's not good. And then um, to get to those user-facing actions, you use the uh, Run Actions button in the ribbon menu. All right, so that kind of wraps up our training, our Kickstart training of doing a help desk system. Um, so um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of a taste of what it's like to build out a solution using Ultimate Forms tools. Um, as with any things like this, the best kind of training you can do is hands-on practice. So hopefully you're able to 
build and work along based on some of the things that were demonstrated, uh, we do have a lot of good training options for you. Um, so we have hands-on practice uh, with InfoWise, and we have two levels of that. Um, the first and most popular is Ultimate Forms Foundation. Um, this is a lab-based training in which we'll work with you live one-on-one -on -one with an instructor, and you'll work through labs and build solutions with somebody by your side to help you out. We'll do that over a web meeting, and um, you'll be able to talk with an instructor to do that. And that can be for a group of people in your organization, as many as eight people in one class. Uh, that training lasts for a total of five hours. Um, and we have an additional class beyond that for more advanced users. This would be for your SharePoint developers, SharePoint admins, or Ultimate Forms veterans who really want to get even more out of uh, Ultimate Forms. We have Ultimate Forms Advanced. Um, so this just kind of describes foundation training. Um, this is for newer users. You don't have to be a longtime SharePoint veteran or anything like that. And it's geared for people who are not technical. Um, but it's really valuable for anybody new to the product. And then advanced, um, this is more of a deep dive into the product uh, for experienced SharePoint users or InfoWise veterans. So um, both of these types of training are instructor-led and um, comprise a series of four uh, hands-on labs that you'll do with the instructor. Other information, um, we have hands-on um, training and exercises. There's tutorials. If you go into the main InfoWise site, um, there's over 100 different articles showing step-by-step -step examples of how to use settings and tools. Um, we have InfoWise partners. Um, if you need help uh, with the solution, um, you can go to our partners page and you can uh, seek out a partner to help work with you or build a solution for you using our tools. We do webinars each month. Um, these are uh, geared you know, both at existing customers and people are considering the product, so that can give you some good ideas on what to build. Um, we update our blog regularly with new information and updates on new features, so be sure to check that out. And if you have questions about this training, if you got stuck on any part of this, or you have questions about other training possibilities for foundation training or advanced training, uh, please send me an email direct at willc at infowisesolutions.com, and I'll be happy to help you out. So that covers everything for training today. Um, I really love these tools. Uh, they're awesome, and you can build solutions quickly. I hope this Kickstart training helped you a lot, and um, I hope this is just the first step in your journey on using and becoming an expert at using the Infowise tools. Thank you very much.